Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. By Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code hamnation when you check out. And by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In-stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash hamnation. Nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 203 for July 1st, 2015. The Field Day Wrap Up. Hey, good evening, everybody. It's Wednesday night, 8 o'clock Central. You know what that means. That means it is Ham Nation time. And, of course, this is the post-field day wrap-up. But wait a minute. What? I'm, getting a, I'm, I'm getting a bulletin here. Bob Heil, something. <laughs> Bob Heil, what, are you, what in the world are you doing, Mr. Heil? What is going on with you? What? What are you doing? What in the world are you doing? <laughs> I'm, make, I'm making an antenna. Right here, I'm, I'm making an antenna. You have lost yeah. your mind. You can't transmit no. on that. You need bigger wire. Yeah. You can? Listen. Listen. I, I'll tell you what happened. Listen to this. Listen to this. Wrong connection. Last night, I ran across this guy. Check this out. This is K9EID. Let's see if I can hear you. Roger, Roger. Well, you're hey, going over on me up here in Michigan. Uh, the call is November 5, Mike Juliet, November. Uh, but I'm talking on a Yaesu FT950 uh, with your Goldmine uh, GM 5.1. Uh, that's going through an uh, AL80B amplifier doing about 750 watts. And that goes to, it goes, it doesn't go to a tuner because it's a uh, mess WR is good here. Um, goes out to an inverted V at about 40 feet. What's the inverted V made from? It's made from orange extension cords. <laughs> that, that's incredible. I love it. And uh, I had an old 100 foot extension cord. Well, it wasn't really that old. The wire was good inside. And uh, I just uh, just took that and cut it and, and uh, put it up there and tuned it. And uh, I got about uh, 48 ohms, uh, uh, one to, about a one to one almost across the whole band of, uh, of uh, uh, 40 meters. Why? Well, I. I... It worked for him, so I'm. I got out my trusty little meter here. Just, <laughs> talk about a meter, old oh, buddy. This new MFJ is something special. I got out my trusty meter, and uh, I'm going to follow uh, this little deal. And um, uh, for his center insulator, um, he he used his wife's cutting board. Well, of course and he did. So, yeah. Why wouldn't you? And so, yeah. <laughs> And I, I tell you what I did. I called Joe Walsh and I said, hey, Joe, what do you think about this? And he thought it was great. His advice was do not plug this into where it's supposed to go. <laughs> no, probably not. Okay. So while you guys kibitz around, I think there's a couple more people that you want to uh, talk to here right at the first. But I am so excited about, uh, about Jason's antenna, and he just got his extra license yesterday, sends me an email. I get on the air with him, and I couldn't believe it. It was 15 overnight. Okay, there's my story for the day. Um, That's let's see funny. what happens when you me for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so so we've got we've got we've got windham antennas and we've got doublets. What do we call that? A home dipole? Um, <laughs> that's awesome. A, a suspension cord special. That's hilarious. That's soon awesome. soon to be featured on Amateur Logic. Exactly. <laughs> Coming soon to a home dipole near you. Speaking of Amateur Logic. 
yeah, speaking of amateur logic, let's go up to Jackson and say hi to George. And then we'll swing out to the West Coast and say hi to Gordon. Then we'll kick this thing off right. What's going on, George? How was field day? Uh, field day was great, Don. We really had a blast. I don't have all the footage edited yet, but I do have a little snippet for you tonight. You know, I thought it was dangerous when Bob was sitting there with the extension cord around his neck. But then <laughs> when he pulled out Sarah's cutting board, I just, oh yeah, I'm surprised he survived. <laughs> well, the night's young. Anything could happen. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's funny. All right. Well, now let's head out to the West Coast and see what uh, Gordon West has up his sleeve. How are you? Good night, sir. <laughs> well, thanks, everyone, and happy July. That's right around the corner. Look at this. Before July, CQ, back on schedule, comes out with their great July issue. Congratulations. And this weekend... Fourth of July weekend, many of you are going to be, as I am, working parades. And look at this. Uh, we tried it out this past weekend at Field Day. Uh, this is the new Heil handheld uh, microphone speaker mic setup without any giant cords that just plug into either a Kenwood, Yesu, ICOM, or a select number of the Chinese radios. And uh, the microphone uh, can go either left or right. So if you think that you're going to be doing a parade and you don't want to put up with a little earphone in your ear, um, get a hold of DX Engineering and tell them to send it out like uh, a red and purple label so you get it in time for the 4th of July parade. But that's what we're going to be using at this end. And then we're going to see everybody on the East Coast at Boxboro. The Boxboro Convention, August 21, 22, and 23. We're going to be visiting uh, those that teach at the Clay Center Amateur Radio Club's Dexter Southfield School. They've got like 40 kids that are now hams and on the air. So, Don, it's going to be a great time. And I'm wearing the Great South Bay Amateur Radio Club shirt because I need a ride to the airport on that Sunday, the 23rd. Anybody going back through, New, uh, through Boston, uh, Gordo needs a ride. All right, Don, back to you before we tell you and everyone about Field Day West Coast. Yeah, well, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure somebody will haul your carcass around. That uh, shouldn't be a problem. Why don't we just go ahead and get, uh, since you're here with us, why don't you just go ahead and get right into your short shots, and we'll just kick this thing off in fine fashion. Go right ahead, sir. All right, it is Field Day, and Brian, if you want to go ahead and roll the, uh, or uh, do the first short shots, every good Field Day operator uh, packs up to get ready for Field Day, and as you can see, uh, we tried to make it happen in the dune buggy. Once we get there, everybody goes, oh my God, all that aluminum. But you got to have aluminum if you're going to do field day. And hopefully you marked everything ahead of time, uh, so you're not having to uh, figure out what's what. And, of course, every good field day has a plot plan. And here was our plot plan. And, Don, this was uh, done just for you and Bob and George. Uh, notice the detail yeah. that we have there. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, of course, we followed our own recommendation. We didn't bring sawhorses like we were supposed to. But there is a patch of grass. Only that's the last grass in California that's actually green. So we assembled it on the deck. And uh, that took a lot of... Uh, uh, scrapes uh, to get uh, out of. Uh, these are the telescopic flagpoles, and uh, the one uh, we uh, used this past weekend really worked well. You just uh, go ahead and uh, the articulated mount on the back of the comm van. That's the big six meter uh, beam antenna, and uh, it's up and playing, and then you have to, ooh, have to hoist up that flagpole. But we got her going with 10 meters in the background and two and 440 and wire antennas that you can't see that next morning saturday morning field day morning up at uh crack of dawn we got our colors flying and we're ready to roll we were not as large as we were in the uh, years past but nonetheless we hit right at 11 o'clock california time but before we did some testing and this is our um our uh, long path testing uh, it was uh yeah okay you get the idea talk on one end and receive on the other you got to have a little fun at field day. Well, we started off and we knew immediately we needed an edge. Uh, we had the great ICOM 9100 as the main rig. And you put a lady on the mic and they will generally get the first uh, calls back. See the big smile on her face? She can't write fast enough. So uh, field day, we were off and rolling. That's Mike, our chief uh, uh, in charge of field day. 
Uh, he's got an older radio, but he, uh, Mike, did you make? Holy smoly, the first 15, 20 minutes. Look at that. He filled up a page, logging it himself. So field day was looking good on the West Coast. Uh, we had some openings in the South America. So one of our operators had to put on his South America cape and uh, was on the air making calls. And uh, we had brand new hams as well as kids come into the field day site. And um, here we're getting a brand new ham on the air. And a lady, of course, that will get a lot of attention on the air. Then Saturday afternoon, it rained. Now, no rain like you folks had on the East Coast. You got slammed Saturday night and Sunday. Uh, we had maybe a sprinkle, but we were ready. So the clouds came. And then they went. And um, our, our biggest problem was voltage. Well, we had plenty of voltage to start off with, with all sorts of deep cell batteries and so on. But where we found voltage drops were in the Anderson connectors. Now, I like Andersons as long as they're not having to pull a lot of current because the Anderson connectors are, are touchy. If you don't exercise them regularly, they're not going to pass much current, and you have almost an open connection uh, at small amounts of current. And if you uh, really dog them too much, uh, then they get warm. And we fell around and running uh, some of the rigs, so they were getting warm. And, oh, look at this. Yep, you lose the pin out of that, or you don't tie wrap it uh, on the backwards way. And misalignment, and you're in trouble here, the rig will go out. Now, if for some reason the black begins to pull its pin back and not make connection, now you've got real problems because now the current is going to try and return to the source through your antenna or the common ground. Not good. So with Andersons, make sure that you are carefully monitoring them. And, yep, we had 13.6 volts at the source, but once we started transmitting... It went down to like 12 volts and 11 volts. Whatever happened to this connection? I like these connectors because they make things a solid connection and they can handle the current. Um, where we did find some interesting anomalies were some of the Anderson uh, connector boxes that folks brought along. Some of them were missing like uh, an open spot there where the connector box uh, Anderson just fell out. Probably not just fell out, but got worked out. And here's a common problem. Uh, this box was uh, jiggled and wrestled. And notice that the plastic broke off and one of the Andersons just pulled out. So these boxes are a problem if they're not properly uh, worked and massaged and treated properly. And as for handling 40 or 50 amps, that one box said, I don't think so. <clears throat> Uh, more like uh, for 10 amps or, or less. And something like this, <clears throat> it's going to handle no amps. So double check. Now, this one we like. This was from West Mountain, and they had the little LEDs that would light up in case you popped the fuse. But um, even uh, some of those, when we had two or three of the HF radios uh, working, uh, began to give us a, a fairly substantial voltage drop. Because remember, on the inside of these... Uh, voltage distribution uh, Anderson connector boxes. Um, they use the actual printed circuit board uh, with a layer of conductive coating on it to pass the current. And when we talk about current up to 10 amps, okay. But anything more than that, we began to see some pretty sizable voltage drops. Take a look at this, Don. Now, this one really did well. So I wanted to see why it worked so well. And uh, we pried it open and... Yeah, oh, that's pretty go. straightforward. And yeah, yeah. that uh, that works. So um, uh, the, I just don't know about the long boxes. Here's another good one that worked out well. We got a Dayton and uh, direct connections, almost no voltage loss there. <clears throat> so if you got the long boxes, make sure that you've got a fuse in addition to the fuses that the uh, boxes supply. And um uh, we had one of the boxes here, and we took it out of circuit because it was my great uh, setup, and we were losing um, we were losing some volts, and uh, the built-in little battery, the uh, lithium iron phosphate battery, did a great job of buffering it. So if you're at the other end of a circuit, get a little buffer battery. Well, <laughs> that's a pretty big one, but look at the size of those leads. And if you're going ahead and power something real small, you can get by with 12 gauge. 
But if you're going to be powering an ICOM HF radio, you better have a buffer battery right next to the radio or a one farad capacitor that you get at the local audio store. <clears throat> and the mobile electronics one farad cap will really uh, keep that voltage fairly smooth. So the, uh, the new case uh, worked out well and the buffer battery uh, worked out swell. But the best part of field day, of course, is in the evening when we have the weenie roast and uh, we have the good smellers on the barbie and uh, everybody chows down. And, uh, of course, after dinner, when we're still working, uh, Coach brought the wash tub. And look at this. So we had a great little fire going out of an old wash tub. Wife probably won't miss it. So we had a rather small field day, but a happy field day out here on uh, the West Coast. So field day is fun, but we found that swedged connectors sometimes would give us a voltage uh, drop if they weren't properly swedged on the Andersons. And again, this is the thing to look for is what's going on on the inside. Look at this. Look at this wire right here that goes through a switch. That's not going to really handle a lot of current if you're rolling an HF radio. So yeah, I like Andersons. But after this past field day, I don't like them for any more than about 10 amps of current max. Or <clears throat> I really need to make sure that we've got plenty of large wire feeding those Andersons. All right. Now, Russell up in the Washington area, Debbie and Russell sent us these great uh, short shots. And we'll just roll them. And uh, they went to the Tacoma field day. <clears throat> And uh, that radio club has their own clubhouse. Wow, I love that. And uh, they say, stop by the clubhouse and have a donut. Look what they did for their field day site. They actually had them all laid out. So those that came to visit it, uh, uh, they had a, a complete tour. And uh, here's the satellite station. Yeah, that's a great one. And, of course, every good ham has uh, a buddy that has a car that looks like that. There's our satellite operator. <laughs> That's uh, Bob doing a great job. And look how they separated all of their stations. While it didn't give you that sort of uh, everybody around the table operating, uh, each individual station had its own uh, area. So you wouldn't have to hear their generator or your yakking on the air. Nice military mass. Oh, that's a great setup that they have there. And of course, the boom mic and uh, all the amenities. And look at that. They got the power supply right below them. Look at that dipole. Is that nice? Yep, that's a goodie. Uh, maybe made out of a uh, Home Depot extension cord, but there you go. And that's ham radio field day operation. Now, look at this. This is great. How many do we have that had someone pedaling a bicycle to uh, generate that current? Yeah, a little faster. We need a little bit more voltage. I'm pedaling as fast as I can. I do like <laughs> that purple shirt. And um, uh, here's another operator. Uh, it's got a nice chair set up, a grass mat that he's sitting on, foot switches. Uh, that's our CW guy doing well. And uh, talk about pressure. Look at this. So now the other operator gets on the bicycle and look what's coming up uh, uh, somewhere. There's a voltmeter. Oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, look at the pressure. Always monitoring your own voltage as you pedal and pedal for the emergency contact points for human-powered voltage. And, uh, of course, pretty ladies on the air always help out. Electronic logging is always good. So that was uh, the field day from uh, that uh, terrific station. So field day is fun. Russell and Debbie and the cat, thanks for sending those photos on down. And we've got more photos, but we'll show them over the next few weeks. I won't be here next week. I'll be doing another radio get together, but I'll see everybody in two weeks. OK, Don or no, it's back to Bob, I think, this time. Bob, back to you. Uh I got a note from Dennis in the chat room wanted to know what we're using for mixers. All of us here on Ham Nation are using the Elises. And this is a wonderful mixer, Multimix 8. It has USB out. So we just plug that USB right into the computer. Don't need to do anything. And away we go. I, I love it. It works great. And uh, you might want to check it out. It's very high quality. We, uh, we're very fortunate BSW provides those for here on Ham Nation. And um, 
We'll, uh, we'll be back next week. We had a lot to do here in the beginning. I'll have some more field day for you next week. But uh, we wanted, wanted to bring you that great piece from, uh, from our, uh, our new ham, uh, uh, Jason, with his uh, wonderful antenna. It just sounded so good. Well, we'll uh, go see what ICOM's got going here as we move on down the show. And uh, you never know what comes from ICON, but you know it's going to be good. ICOM America and ICOM Canada are teaming up to offer ham radio operators some incredible savings. Get a great deal on a D-Star repeater direct from ICOM and help expand D-Star across North America. With the release of the ID-51A Plus and ID-5100A, more people are getting on the air with D-Star. For a limited time, ICOM is offering a bi-direct D-Star promotion for U.S. and Canadian residents only. Purchase the D-Star repeater through the D-Star infrastructure program. Visit ICOM America's website, view current amateur promotions, and buy direct. This promotion is good for a limited time only. Review complete instructions online and call or email in your order today. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM's bi-direct program. And you can tune in and enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash ham nation. Throw your name in the hat for a chance at some great swag prizes like T-shirts or hats. And also learn how you can win the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio. For June, the grand prize has been awarded. It was the IC2730A Practical Analog Dual Band Dual Watch Mobile. The winner... Doug, K-A-0-M-H-J. So congratulations, Doug. ICOM will be getting that to you right away. And for July, we've got another great grand prize. That's going to be the ID-31A compact 5-watt UHF handy talkie with submersible construction, analog, and D-Star operation, built-in GPS, micro SD card slot, and a lot more. So go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation for the official rules and... Sign up, good luck, and don't forget to follow ICOM America, Inc. on Facebook and Twitter. And we're talking about field day this week. Well, I got a lot of footage from field day, and uh, Tommy and Wayne and I went off the grid way out in the country again. Uh, really great time. I haven't got all the footage edited yet. We're still kind of uh, assembling all that together. And I'll let you know when and where you can watch that. But I do have a, a short but sweet clip for you this week on the main radio that I use for Phil Day. I'm running my favorite mobile rig here. It's my IC7000. I pulled it out of the truck just so I could use it today. Uh, I, I really love the unit, you know, and I built that keyer for it last year so that I can do voice keying with it. I keep my rig set up the way that I would like to run it mobile, but for operations like field day, there are some things I would like to change. One of them is the monitor. I go into my quick set menu and others, and I've got the choice for monitor right there. I'll put that on on. What that does is allows me to hear myself coming through the headsets when I transmit. It's kind of disconcerting to be listening to all the stations on the air and then your headphones go dead when you transmit yourself. So turn on your monitor. That's one thing you'll definitely want to do if you're using headphones. I like to keep the compressor turned off on this rig when it's in the mobile because otherwise it's just picking up excess noise when I transmit. But for field day when I'm trying to break some pileups, I might want to turn on the compressor by going into the menus and selecting COM right here. Then it's on. So now when I transmit, I'll see that the compressor is operating on the scale here at the bottom. Another option that can be handy is the voice keyer. I'll go into my menu here, and I go into voice TX. Now I've got menu choices that I can hit here 
that I've got pre-programmed for messages I'll need during field day so I can save my voice. November 5, Zulu, November Oscar. No matter what make or model of transceiver you're using, there is a chance that you might want to do a little tweaking on it before the next contest. So that's mainly what I used was my IC7000. It really worked out great. And, you know, just making a few little tweaks like that can really tailor your rig for the particular conditions you're operating under. You know, for field day, well, I, I just, um, I used headphones. I normally don't use them. So I can't have the monitor turned on or else every time I keyed the mic, you'd hear feedback coming through the speaker. But if you're going to use headphones, turn on your monitor. Also, the compressor. You know, if you're riding down the road, you got the window rolled down, you key up the mic, they're going to hear more wind noise and they're going to hear you. So I try to stay away from the compressor as uh, much as possible. But, you know, good for that uh, maybe a little bit of extra kick during field day. Um, Tommy used an IC7100, which is... I guess a predecessor to the 7000, he really had good luck with it. You know, that's that uh, new touchscreen rig. And he mostly worked 15 meters with that. And it's very similar to the 7000. Uh, you know, some of the things I had uh, set on my 7000, we went over and looked at his rig and found the same settings there. Uh, Wayne ran a, uh, a Yezu Mobile and uh, had good luck with it as well. We ran off generator power, as uh, we generally do. And we even had a few extra conveniences this year that I'm not going to talk about yet. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll get to them in the future. But uh, let me say, uh, you know, the title was going to be uh, Field Day 3 Hotter Than Hell, but it didn't turn out that way here at all. Uh, good weather and, uh, well, good conveniences, I guess, at the site this year. So uh, great time at Field Day. I hope all the rest of you had a good time. And for us... You know, it was really more about setting up and getting ready and just having a big time than it was actually sitting down and trying to make uh, a maximum number of contacts. We, you know, probably had as many contacts as we've had in uh, recent years, but we weren't pushing it. You know, we were just there to see that we could get all our gear assembled and set up and that it all worked and just to have a good time. And we certainly succeeded at that. Well, you know, last week I asked a question what year was the first Phil Day held? And I think I've probably actually asked that before. And the year, according to Sean Crawford, WA8MXJ, was 1933. And congratulations, Sean. We're going to send you this Heil. And I, I don't remember the name of this, Bob. What is it? It's the LB-1R lighted microphone base. Lighted microphone Really nice, uh, heavy-duty microphone stand there. Put it right on your desk. Screw your mic on. You're set to go. And you've got that lighted LED display in the bottom of it, too, along with the push-to-talk button. So congratulations, Sean. We're going to get that out to you. Uh, another um, interesting point, you know, I mentioned it, and it wasn't really part of the question, but I said we'd talk about it. The, the original purpose of Phil Day uh, was not really to get out and uh, have a contest. Uh, according to F.E. Handy, W1BDI, uh, it was published in QST, what he said, the real object is to test portables wherever they may be available. And I guess in 1933, there probably were not a lot of portables available. So uh, he really started a, a great tradition then because I know all of us, Really enjoy field day every year that we can get out and operate it. Well, for next week, I've got another question. And this question, uh, for field day this year, my group operated as class 3A or 3 alpha. What does 3A mean? If you know the answer to that, then send your answer to me at hamnationcontest at gmail.com. And you could win this MFJ 1811 telescopic scanner slash receiver antenna with a BNC connector on the end of it. You could also use this on your handy talkie for uh, VHF or UHF. Get a little bit of extra ump over what you would get with uh, rubber duck. Hamnationcontest at gmail.com. Tell me what 3-alpha means. And now let's uh, let's bring Don in here and 
see what's been going on as far as getting Newsline back in order? Well, we're, we're well on our way, as a matter of fact. We, uh, we've been talking about um, uh, getting it back up for the month of July, and we're going to do that. Um, not this week, 4th of July and everything. We decided we're going we're gonna to shoot for next week, and hopefully we'll have uh, Newsline back up and running. Um, Bill Pashnak, of course, is irreplaceable, but we have found uh, someone who has writing and editing skills, who has worked for uh, magazines and for uh, news organizations before, and she does excellent work. She contacted us and said, hey, um, I'm really interested in doing this. She's a ham. She's a new ham, as a matter of fact. Been, been licensed a year or two. And she's over in New York. So um, we've been talking to her. And uh, we're in the process of putting a newscast together right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, trying some new things. It's going to be Newsline 2.0. Uh, we're going to revamp things a little bit. It's going to be a, a slightly shorter format. We're going to go to uh, two segments instead of three. So instead of the normal... 25, 24 minute newscast. We're going to try to stay uh, 15 to 18. Uh, you know, we, we try to do the segments to be nine minutes because, of course, you know, they're played on repeaters or, or HF stations and you have to ID every 10 minutes. So we stay within that, uh, take one break and then do the second segment and, uh, and be done uh, and uh, try to uh, have more of a digest uh, form. And point you to links on the uh, on the website uh, as those are applicable and uh and just try to revamp it a little bit and uh, and see if we can improve on on the the f almost 40 years uh, of heritage that Bill Pasternak uh, has set down for us and it's a tall order but uh, we're going to we're going to do our best so hopefully we'll have uh, another newsline uh, headline video for you next week we do not have solar weather this week uh, Tamitha Scove has got a bunch of things going on in her life and she just did not have time to put one together for us but uh, we will hopefully have her back again next week now George I want to talk a little bit about field day did you guys make any six meter contacts because I want to tell you six meters was kicking here this was my first time running a uh, field day here at home as a one delta how many contacts did you guys make george over there with your three alpha uh, i don't remember the exact number of contacts i know our total score at the end of the event was 574 that was with the multipliers for emergency power and uh, okay. all such as that but uh, we did i looked at the logs and i know we got only two six meter contacts but that's two more than we've ever gotten before uh, six meters was open. We were hearing some activity there. The uh, antenna I was using was a 40-meter off-center fed dipole, which would work on six. Not optimal for it, but, um, yeah, I made a couple of contacts there on six. Probably could have done a little better. We we made some on 10 meters as well. I mostly concentrated on 40 and 20, though. And mm. uh, Tommy mostly did uh, 15, and uh, Wayne operated uh, 80 and 40, but... You know, we separated our antennas well enough that we didn't really have any problem with uh, anybody bleeding into anyone else, which is, you know, can be a problem at field day. Yeah. And we also made sure that we were not on the same bands at the same time. But I don't guess you had that problem. No, I didn't. Just working by myself. Um, and it, it's 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 funny because I had no idea um, how to even approach doing field day here by myself as a one delta because I was just a casual operator. I've always done it, you know, with the club as a, as a two alpha or a three alpha or whatever, like you guys. And it's always been a 24 hour deal. Well, you know, I, I got up and, and I started uh, right at, uh, right at one o'clock central and worked for a while. And my wife said, Dawn said, Hey, I'm running to Walmart. And I said, well, I'll run to Walmart. I need some things anyway. I got to change your oil. So took a break, went to Walmart, came back and operated until, I don't know, nine or about nine o'clock at night, I guess, went and watched some TV, went to bed, got up the next morning. About six o'clock, I hit it for a while, uh, took another break after about eight or eight thirty, went out and changed her oil and then came back and ran until uh, until it was over. And I managed by myself to do 411 contacts, which wow. I was flabbergasted. I mean, as, as the bands, uh, I heard Katie Allen, WY7YL say earlier tonight on the net and also in the uh, 100 Watts and a Wire podcast, which is up now, by the way. And congratulations to Christian K0SDH. He has, uh, he went f from 400 members of the webs on the uh, Facebook page to 500 in 24 hours. Wow. Um, just amazing. And they had their net tonight on 20 meters. But uh, Katie said that the bands were just horrible. They, were, they weren't bad here, I guess, in South oh. Mississippi. They were better than they were in Wyoming. But I managed to do, uh, I was a few on 80, 
uh, mostly 20 and 40, a few on 10. But I, I did probably close to 100, maybe a little more on six. And it's the most six-meter contacts I've made ever as a ham. So uh, I, I couldn't complain one iota. I think what I may do next year if I do this by myself is I may just uh, try to operate as a one alpha and hook my uh, generator up to the radio so I can... Uh, so I can operate as a, as a one alpha. But I, I had a great time for field. I was, when I, at the end of the day, I looked at the log and I went, are you kidding me? I did 400 contacts by myself. So I, oh. I couldn't complain. I, I we'll, we'll hear more about field day from, from everybody else uh, a little bit later on tonight. But first, let's, uh, let's get into uh, uh, one of our sponsors. And that, of course, is someone, my wife loves this company, not only for what it does for me, but for what it does for her because, well, her man is a Harry's man. And, and, and my lady is a Harry's lady. She's got her own Harry's shaver, and she loves it, absolutely loves it. And this episode of Ham Nation brought to you by Harry's. Harry's is fixing a problem that a lot of us have, and that is, well, it's just, it's, it's so doggone expensive to buy razors. They're overpriced. You know, shaving isn't fun. Sometimes you cut yourself, you scrape yourself. Dull blades are the worst, and they're expensive. They run about four bucks a blade. And if you shave every day, you could spend hundreds of dollars a year just on razors, the big name brand razors that they, you know, put under lock and key because they don't want you stealing them because they are so expensive. Well, you don't have that problem with, with Harry's. You go to the store to buy them again. You know, I mean, they're, they're locked up. It's, it's like, a, you know, a, a, do you have a prescription for that, uh, for that blade, uh, sir? Do I what? Well, here's a company that's fixing all that. It's Harry's. High quality razors, about half the price of the big brand blades, and they're just as good or better because Harry's makes their own blades in their own factory in Germany. They're engineered for sharpness and high performance, and they are shipped free. Look at that. Look at it. Spit those blades out. Look at that thing. That is Germany. That is German steel. That is the best steel in the world. That is really good stuff. And, of course, they are shipped to you for free. And because Harry's makes their own blades and ship their own blades, it's a very efficient company, which means you get factory direct pricing, and that saves you money. In each kit, you get a razor with a handle that looks and feels great, razor blades, uh, three of those, and foaming shave gel. You got to go check this out. The, the starter Truman set is a great deal, and you get it all for just 15 bucks. I've been using Harry's for a good while now. I love it, and it's so cool because it's something that I, I kind of, it's almost like pampering myself. It's something nice that I do for myself. It's a nice, clean, close, comfortable shave. I love the look of the set. I love the feel of the set. I love the price, and I love what it does to my face. Makes my face, well, my, my wife, she likes to touch my face when I have my Harry's shave. And it costs about half as much of the razors at the store. And the aftershave moisturizer protects and hydrates, and, and it's, it's, it's really nice. You need, to, you need to do something nice for yourself. Go to harrys.com. You get $5 off your first purchase when you put Ham Nation. And as the code, that's H A R R Y S dot com. Enter code Ham Nation at checkout. And Harry's, thank you so much for everything you do for Ham Nation, and and thank you for what you do for for me, and 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 what you do for my wife. And and uh, I'm telling you, she loves it, dude. I'm telling you, you gotta. If you're not a Harry's man, you are. <laughs> you're missing out. You're missing out. Okay, now we mentioned we mentioned Christian K zero S T H a little bit earlier. And, and we've got a, a little video package that was recorded in Dayton on the Thursday before the Ham Fest. And uh, uh, Christian did all this, and it's just, it's really good. So let's go ahead and roll this beautiful bean footage. Over 200 students attended the 2015 Contest University at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Dayton, Ohio. Some of the best contesters on the planet took in 23 presentations in hopes of gaining a slight edge over the competition. Contest University also welcomed a couple of future stars from Bloomington High School South. This is Ryan Cutshaw and Thomas Getz. These students represent the contest operators at the Bloomington High School South Amateur Radio Club, a talented team of young amateurs that would place third worldwide in the high school division of the school club roundup in February. We've reached a point um, with school club roundup that we're ready to go on to the next level. And we've reached a point where we think we need to learn just those things that will take us just a little bit higher in our scores. 
uh, because we've we've kind of maxed out what we're doing, and so our, our goal here is to try to step that up a little bit, and then uh, we hope to participate in CQ Worldwide next year. These students are used to making hundreds of unique contacts, scoring thousands of points, and logging for dozens of hours. But Contest University was designed to open new doors in the way that we approach contesting. This is my first ham fest in general, and the first one is Dayton, which is the biggest, which is an honor. And um, the ability to come to this Contest University, thank you to the uh, North Cal California DX Foundation, they uh, granted this scholarship for my club to join this wonderful event that they have here. Contest University is amazing in what it can teach you when it comes to contesting. Every school that is serious about contesting should be here. It's a great opportunity and this is the big leagues. Uh, that's what me and my sponsor have been saying all day is we're here, we're, we're in the big leagues now and every school should have the opportunity to be here to advance not just contesting but ham radio and youth uh, because that's a huge thing that we need right now is youth. CTU reminds operators of fair play and ethics, upgrades and antennas, CW and RIDI, better audio and ways to improve your scores. Contest University Chairman Tim Duffy. I, I think it's it's vital and it's very important, especially uh, handing it off the right way and teaching uh, good operating skills so that uh, we can be proud of contesters and contest operating on the air. Everything that I learned in contesting, I learned from somebody else. Although the guys tended to stay in the back of the class, veteran operators were tuned in to their presence. Well, it was great to see these uh, young kids here from the Bloomington High School. Um, it's very exciting because I know we can get a lot more kids in this hobby. They're, they do have that competitive spirit. I mean, you see this with the Xbox and all the video games that they do. So I think a lot of us need to mentor and reach out to these kids to try and get them into this hobby because it can only add to it. I mean, looking around these rooms, it looks like the average age is about 60. I know on Jerry's last day expedition, the last day, the average age was 64. So it's really important that we get out there and try and mentor these kids and, and get them ex as excited about this hobby as we all were when we first started in it. This was the 27th Worldwide Contest University. It was the ninth held in Dayton. For many, Contest University serves as a forum to share ideas and to become better amateur radio operators. For this professor, passing on the teaching of this hobby and service is a way of life. Well, it's, it's very important because when I was 15 years old, I got very involved in ham radio because of one of my high school chums. And the situation there is it turned out to be practically my college education. I learned how to build things and, and all of the many things that happen with amateur radio. It's not just talking one-on-one. -on -one. That's the, the final part of it. But it's learning all of the technology and the science of amateur radio and for me it was just a great big education and it continues even today I learn things every day so it's very important that these young kids take take a look because this is a, a real avenue of technology that can lead them to all kinds of careers from Contest University 2015 in Dayton Ohio I'm Christian K0STH for Ham Nation Man, I cannot talk enough about that school, Bloomington South in uh, in Bloomington, Indiana, and the teacher, Neil Rapp. Neil Rapp uh, has an interesting history him, himself. He was, at one point, the youngest licensed amateur radio operator in the country. I think he was five at the time. I think. I want to say something like that. And also, the most recent uh, Young Ham of the Year uh, from Amateur Radio Newsline is Padraig Lissandru, and his call sign escapes me. I didn't know that that, that, that package was going to be on, on that school, or I would have had this call sign. But Padraig Lissandru was the, the most recent uh, young ham of the year, and I've worked, uh, I've worked his sisters, uh, one of his sisters anyway, uh, in that station, uh, that school, from the school roundup. And it's just, it's amazing the things that, 
that Neil Rapp is doing with those kids in that school is is nothing short of amazing. And uh, uh, I'm I'm just proud as I can be to to call those guys my friends. So that's that's very cool. And um, hopefully we'll we'll see Neil and and the Lasandres again. The Lasandres went to Dayton as a as a family, and it's great to run into them. Uh, so just a great family. And, uh, and great kids and a great school and an amazing teacher. So they are uh, certainly deserving of, of every nice thing that, that comes their way. So that's good. I wanted to, I wanted to get that out. All right, we're going we're gonna to get into Amanda in the chat room here in just a sec. But, you know, we want to talk about DX Engineering. Today is July 1. You know what that means? Well, besides my, my, my dearly departed mother's birthday, happy birthday, Mom. I love you and I miss you desperately. It's been 20 years now. But uh, here's, here's the thing about July 1st, besides being my mom's birthday. The FCC has officially updated the general class license exam question pool. So if you're studying for your general upgrade, don't worry about it. Forget about it. DX Engineering has the brand new license and instruction manuals right now available today. The day they come out that reflect the updated FCC general class question pool. The ARRL, of course, still the go-to source for reference material, including the new 8th edition general class manual. If you studied for your tech with an ARRL license manual, you'll be familiar with the, the uh, format. It'll arm you with uh, exactly what you need to pass the exam and to get your ticket. Clear, concise lessons and a great appendix that contains the full FCC general class license exam question pool. And remember, the pool was just updated today. So make sure you get the most current version. It also comes with a handy CD-ROM, and uh, you can take practice tests with randomly generated questions from the entire question pool. And uh, DX Engineering also carries books and study manuals from Gordon and the WD5YI group. Uh, Those books present uh, sometimes complex technical principles with straightforward and easy-to-understand terms and no confusing tech speak or jargon. That's uh, that's one of the things about you know just getting into this. This is a it's like flying an airplane. There's a lot of technical stuff that you need to know to understand what you're talking about. Well, uh, Gordon West uh, takes that and distills it down into into stuff that anybody can. I mean, hell, if I can understand it, anybody can. Go to dxengineering.com. See the tech general and extra class options. From Gordon and from the ARRL, you can choose from standalone books, complete study guides with the audio, CDs, and software packages, and they're all designed to help you ace your exam and become a ham. Poetry skills notwithstanding. Ham Radio School also offers comprehensive study guides as well. They're uh, authored by Stu Turner, W0STU. He's a professional instructor and a former engineering professor with the U.S. Air Force Academy. So, you know, he's, he's got brains. He regularly teaches at his local radio club where his students boast a 90% pass rate, and you can do that too. Uh, the books will help you pass the test, plus help you get the most out of your new HF band privileges. Remember, today is the day the FCC has changed the general class license exam question pool. Make sure you have the most up-to-date license manuals right now by shopping DX engineering and dx engineering of course you know this they ship faster than anybody else in the industry you get your order in by 10 o'clock tonight eastern time and if if it's in stock they'll put it on a truck and it'll be headed your way tonight not tomorrow not four or five days no tonight proven products expert advice the best people the most knowledgeable people Tim Duffy, Terry Greiser, all the folks at D Engineering, they help you shrink the globe. Request a catalog, shop online 24-7 at dxengineering.com slash hamnation. I worked Terry for field day. That was cool. Hi, Terry. She's watching. I like Terry. <laughs> you, think, yeah, you know what I like? See, see Terry, Terry and I, we have something in common that I didn't know until I met her at Dayton. We're both adopted, which is, you know, we, we, that's, that's cool. That's, a, that's, a, that's an exclusive club, so... Uh, Terry's my buddy. DX Engineering, thank you so much for your support of Ham Nation. We, we love you and we appreciate you. And uh, now let's uh, let's see what's happening with uh, another of the fabulous YLs. Look at you. Hello. How are you doing? How are you doing, I'm, darling? Hey, I'm doing great. And hey, happy 4th of July, everybody. Yes. Don't be blown off your hands or anything like that, okay? Um, you know, Colorado, uh, we don't have fireworks, so have they don't fireworks. exist here because of fires and everything. I'm, I'm in, in Mississippi. California. We blow everything yeah. up. <laughs> we like to blow some stuff up. Okay, I've heard that before. <laughs> and it usually starts with, hold this. Um, yeah. Hold my beer or, and watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm already worried. <laughs> nice. That's. That's very nice. Hey, you guys, I had a wonderful field day, by the way. 
Um, we didn't work a lot, but I like to socialize. So I, we had a lot of elected officials out there and um, just a lot of visitors. Did you get a couple kiddos on the go to station, which was pretty cool. First time we've ever done that as a club. So um, and thanks to everyone that worked us this weekend. Appreciate that too. That was fun. Um, let me get to some questions here. Oh, wait, no, I still, I have one announcement. Don't forget, since I'm talking about the 4th of July, the 13 colonies are on right now with their special events. So it's anything from, I think it's Kilo, oh boy, I'm going to screw this up. Kilo 1 Alpha to Kilo 1 Mike. Anyhow, um, get out there and work them. They're on all bands, CW and voice. So have fun doing that. And you guys can uh, apply for your special certificates and QSL cards. Okay, let's move on now. Um, first question I have is for George. And hello, George. Uh, someone says, and I'm sorry, Tristan KC3DHZ says he's trying to decide between an IC7200 and an IC7410. Should he save up more for the 7410 to get the roofing filters and better receiver? What do you think? We know you're the ICOM expert. Well, um, oh, hi, Amanda. Hi. Good to see you. Uh, you. You know, that's a good question. If you can't wait, go ahead and get the uh, 7200. It's going to be a great rig. If you plan on uh, operating portable, moving around a lot, it's real heavily constructed. Um, gr great for that type of uh, operation. Also good as a base station. But the 7410, um, you, you know, just I've had one here before in the shack and played with it some. It sounds a lot more like the more expensive uh, ICOM rigs, like some of the flagship rigs. It's very similar sound and operation there. I think if you can put it off and wait just a little bit, uh, you would um, you'd appreciate the difference between the two. But if you're ready to go now, go with the 7200. Uh, you, you'll be happy with it, too. Very good. And um, after using a rig that doesn't have kind of filters and one that does, of course, low end to high end, I would say go for the high end, definitely. You you won't regret it, that's for sure. And uh, have fun, whichever you purchase, and have fun on the HF bands there for sure. Okay, Bob, um, nice to have you back, by the way. It sounds like you had a fun field day. I have a boat anchor question for you, and I do think that you are expert boat anchor. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know. Expert. Lodi, you and Jeff, though. And, uh, <laughs> okay. I'm out here. Uh, okay, so the question here is, and maybe you're not even familiar with it. We'll just see if you are. Uh, Yezu FTDX 400, quote, unquote, boat anchor. He says um, he's only a technician, and um, right now it runs 200 watts. Is there a way to turn down the power so that he can um, use it wherever he wants to? Just he'd like to lower the power. Is that possible? And what is the boat anchor? What's the model? Did he say an FT DX 400 Fox Tango Delta X Ray 400? Well, I don't know why you'd want to turn the power down. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good uh, question. Well, maybe it's during field be day. Pretty, during field day, it would be rough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So See then, uh, want to Tyler, um, it doesn't look promising to turn down your power, but hey, I think you should take advantage of the 200 watts for sure and have fun on 10 meters there. He says he's a technician and looking forward to getting on the bands. Um, you guys, other than that, happy Canadian Day and um, happy 4th of July. That's all I've got for tonight. Um, I'll send it back to you, Bob. Um, hey, Amanda, I want to I want to congratulate you for your flag behind you. That's very nice. Ah, oh, thank yes. you. I, I had a luncheon yesterday with one of my great friends. He's 93, and he was a paratrooper that jumped on Armady Beach. Uh, <gasps> he got very, very uh, blown up over there. He was in a hospital for six months, but he's doing great now, and uh, he's a tremendous patriot. Don't talk to him about desecrating the flag or this country. He'll come at you. But uh, thanks very much for putting that flag up, and happy 4th to everybody. 
Well, thank you. And I, um, by the way, we have a, a, a porch and a balcony and they're covered in these buntings. And um, I decided to take one off to put it back here for the show. So, of course, we're very patriotic here. Jeff being a firefighter, he bands with his brothers and everything is patriotic around here. So, hey, you guys have a fun weekend. It's great. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of bunting on the, on the property here out front. I put it up the other day. So, Don, are we uh, are we all clear? Everything going uh, going good here? We we got time to uh, close this thing out. <laughs> I think so. Let's talk about the nets because uh, somebody asked me, sent me an email earlier, uh, wondering where the nets were, uh, and I and I, I did not have those frequencies off the top of my head. So I I told that person, I said, well, just watch tonight, and we will mention those. So uh, the uh, twenty and forty meter nets. What are the frequencies, George? You probably have this on the top of your uh, whatever it is that you have on the top of. Well, on the top of my monitor over here, I've got the 20-meter frequency. It's 14.283. Uh, the 40-meter frequency, I have not seen, but typically it's around uh, 7.278, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. Go up or down 10, and uh, and you should be able to find it. Of course, uh, do drop in, uh, star do drop in, star node 355-800 is for echo link. And uh, you know where the D-star is, don't you, Don? I do, as a matter of fact, it's on 14 Charlie. And now earlier tonight, uh, earlier tonight, the uh, 100 watts and a wire net was on uh, 20 meters. And they, they float around. So check out 100wattsandawire.com or the 100 watts and a wire Facebook page. Uh, Christian K0STH just kicked off the podcast. I listened to uh, the first two episodes of it driving to and from work today. And I got to say something. I'm not a podcast guy. I'm a radio guy. You know, I'm a broadcast guy. I've never gotten into podcasts, but this is one that I'm going to be listening to every week. It's it's so well done. Christian is a broadcast pro. He's got Katie Allen on there. I mean, how can you go wrong when you got WY7YL? Uh, and it's just it's 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 you know it's it's just the best. It's uh, so go check out the hundred watts in a wire. You're gonna you're gonna absolutely love it. So anyway, so that's where your nets are tonight. So um, one more um, net, John. Uh, yes, Don. We yeah. almost forgot about Cheryl, 3847. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right, 3847. And uh, let's not forget to uh, throw a little love over to uh, Dan Van Evenhoven, who does the uh, Ham Nation Wiki. Uh, puts a lot of work into that. If you ever wanted to uh, know anything about what we've had on, on uh, any previous shows from number one up until this one, uh, you can find it on the Ham Nation Wiki. That's a labor of love. He puts a lot of time and effort into that. And and we appreciate it, Dan. We appreciate you and everything you do for us. So um, anyway, field day, I think we all survived. We, uh, we all had fun. Uh, I got to talk to uh, a lot of Ham Nation fans on, on field day. And, and uh, you know, it was great. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It, it, you know, I'm not a big time contester, but I got on and I had a, I had a great time. This, this is a great way to get your feet wet in contesting and maybe like me, maybe decide you might want to try your hand at a little bit more contesting. I think that's something I may, I may want to do. So I may have to go to uh, one of Tim Duffy's uh, uh, contest universities here pretty soon. So, all right, let's, uh, let's wrap this thing up because we've just about run out of time. But let's go on around the horn uh, one more time. Uh, uh, George, any, uh, any further comments before we get out of here? Well, just a, a great field day, and I hope everyone else had as much fun as we did this year. And, and I did want to ask you one question, Don. Mm -hmm. Do you think that new rig might have contributed at all to your field day enjoyment? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The 7600? Oh, my God. Yeah. The receiver? The DSP? Uh, oh, my God. I mean, I, I could... Uh, there, this, this is the best receiver I have ever, ever used. And I know for a fact I wouldn't have gotten 400 contacts. I would have lost patience with the old radio. I had a Kenwood 2000. It's a great radio, but it just it was a radio that I never loved. I liked it, but I never loved it. I was always an ICOM guy anyway. I had a, a 746 before uh, Katrina took it and loved that radio. And uh, I'm so happy to have an ICOM back in the shack. And, and the DSP, uh, just the filtering just i was able to tailor it exactly the way i wanted and you're right about using headphones and the and the uh, monitor and, and mm -hmm. also using the uh using the voice recorder i just sat back and i was like okay let's see uh, t1 
Seeky Field Day, Seeky Field Day, AE5 to W Field Day. I'd press that for a while, and then I'd go, I'd go to T2. AE5 to W Field Day, and then someone would call me, and I'd just reach up, and I'd pull the microphone to me with the Vox on, and I would go, uh, station calling, yes? No, it was great, and, and I could hear everybody, and, and, and it was just, it was, it was I just, I, I love it. So, yeah, thanks, thanks, ICOM, for making great radios. It was, it was awesome, so, yeah, love it, love it. Amanda, any, any uh, final thoughts from you tonight before we scoot? I do. I have two, actually. Terry, 500 contacts, really, you're putting us yeah. in shame. I, I, I think that that's all we got on our phone the whole time was we got almost 500. But good job, Terry. Second thing, do not use a one call in Colorado land. Uh, at the end, people couldn't, uh, the QSB was so rapid. They're like, so I hear a Charlie in there and your one call is at Connecticut. I finally was starting to yell things like, Rocky Mountains, Rocky Mountains. So <laughs> don't do it, you guys. Next time we're going with a zero call in Colorado. There you Lesson go. Learned. There you go. All right, Dr. Bob, what's, uh, what, what's, uh, we're, we're so glad to have you back. Are you going to be around for a while longer? Um, I don't know. I have a couple of big tours out there. I'm not sure. I should be here next week, but beyond Good. that, I don't know. <laughs> I never know. I, 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 you know, I'm like the, I'm the doctor. I get this call in the middle of the night. We have something broken, so I have to go. That's back. right. <laughs> Mostly, Paging I Dr. think Bob. I'm blue. <laughs> Making microphone house calls left and right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, all right. We'll see well, you all. Why don't, why don't, yeah, why don't you, why don't you wrap it up and put a bow on it, and we'll, we'll all wave goodbye while Bob, uh, while Bob wraps it up for us. So, from Mississippi, later for you. All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. It was a lot of fun. And who knows what will happen. I'm going to go see if I can get this, uh, this antenna to work. Uh, let me tell you. <laughs> we, we, I definitely got to take Sarah's cutting board back to her. We'll see you all later. Have fun. Catch you afterwards on some of the nets. Bye-bye for now. This is K9EID, and it's all about ham radio.